Hey guys, Heidi here. I am trying to get the lighting right, so I look really washed out. So hold on, let me switch something up just real quick. Let me see if this is a little better. Okay, that's a little better. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to be um, painting this, and I'm gonna show you just some little details with it. Um, see how cute it can turn out? And I wanted to talk to y'all because um, we have so many people out there, and again, if you don't know who I am, my name is Heidi Easley and I teach women how to make money teaching paint parties. And I'm gonna show you a little trick, but if you don't know, um, kind of the thing I wanna talk about just real quick, I'll be on here for just a little bit. Hey guys, good morning. Um, go ahead and tell me where you're from whenever you get on here and if you're already teaching paint parties. But the main thing, I'm trying to figure out how to change this post. Um, so if you comment, you get a little surprise in your um, messenger, but I'm trying to figure it out. Hold on one second. Uh, let me see. Hold on, I can do this. I can do this, bear with me. And then I'm gonna show you a couple of tips for an easy, easy um, painting. And then I'm also going to share, here we go, I think I found it, hold on. Okay, so I think what will happen, try it. If you post a comment, will y'all let me know if you, uh oh, Bobby's gonna kill me. I think I just got white paint on the iPad. Don't tell, don't tell. And um, if y'all could try to comment and then tell me if um, something goes to your inbox, okay? Let me know if that happens. And then I'm going to be painting with y'all for a few minutes and then just kind of talking to you about um, I get all the time. I get so many messages on, I'm gonna um, point this down a little bit, on how, um, let me move this. I'm gonna move this. Did it work, y'all? Did it work? If you look at the, if you look at that, if you put a comment, let me know if it automatically sent you a message. I'm trying to see if it worked. Yes, thank you, Terry. Okay, good. Let's see if I got paint on this iPad. Oh, oh good. I think I'm okay. Okay, good, I just wanted to make sure it's working. All right, so um, I get messages all the time and I'm gonna try to back this up. And thank y'all so much, those of y'all that share and those of y'all that um, that comment. I just wanna say thank y'all. Um, it really, really helps our businesses when y'all do that. Um, I was just at a business conference and um, if you've been watching me in my Facebook stuff, you saw that I was with, I was staying in a house with nine other um, artsy creative people and two of those people their videos were going viral while we were there and it was just so exciting because you know we all are like painting in our studios and doing all of this fun stuff and you know um, and we just you know day in and day out doing this kind of stuff and then sometimes like when y'all share things and when y'all comment it's kind of crazy because you know, if it goes viral, it really, really helps um, businesses. So I was just so happy for two of my friends um, because they ended up with two, two out of 10 of us had viral videos going on at the conference. So I was kind of freaking out, but um, here's what I wanted to tell y'all today. So how many of y'all out there consider yourself a fine artist? Put a yes if you do. Um, and I just wanna give you a little, little tip. If you're wanting to teach paint parties, make, maybe you wanna just make some money for Christmas, you do not have to be a fine artist to do that. Actually, for a paint party business, it's actually better if you're not a fine artist. And I say that because as you can tell, this is not fine art, okay? This is just fun art. This is not fine art. I'm not sitting here claiming to be a fine artist. Um, but can I put together a fun party and organize it and have a great time with people? You better believe I can. You know, I can put together an event. I mean, a lot of a paint party business, guys, is organizing. So this right here, this painting, I would just have the paints ready. I would have everything out. I would, I'm technically not gonna be up there like, okay, here's how you put orange on the bottom pumpkin. No, I'm gonna say, put orange on the bottom pumpkin, right? So I think sometimes we get in our heads and we have this fear. I mean, is anybody else out there like that or is it just me? Because I used to have this like, this imposter complex of, oh my gosh, you know, and um, I honestly,
honestly, when I taught art, I taught art for 10 years. And I have a um, degree in communications, which is basically marketing, um, psychology, and I have my associates in art. So for a long time, when I first started teaching art, because I went back and got all my teaching certifications, but that didn't mean that I went and did a zillion art classes. That just meant I went and took the tests needed, right? So for a long time, even as an art teacher, I had this feeling of like, I'm not worthy enough to teach these kids art. Like they're not gonna get anything from me. And then once I got over myself, once I, sorry, I had a message come through. Once I kind of got over myself and I realized it wasn't about that, it was more about inspiring and giving these kids the tools they needed to be able to want to create because I don't know if y'all have heard of a thing called YouTube or not, but um, you can pretty much go to YouTube and the kids can get on there and learn whatever they want. Well, if I found if I was able to inspire those kids, if I was able to make them excited about art, they were going to pursue it. And so I found when I was a teacher, you know, if I could do a really boring lesson that I thought was, you know, fine art and I could do this kind of, you know, crazy, life, which I know there's a need for that in areas. There's definitely a need and I'm very grateful for the fine artists out there. But when you go to start talking about paint parties, fine art has to be kind of taken out of that sentence, okay? And um, if you're a fine artist, and you're thinking, yeah, I want to do this to make some extra money, but I feel like I'm almost a sellout because <laughs> that bottle made a bunch of noise. I squeezed it and then it went, <laughs> it freaked me out. And um, so if you, you know, if you're in that, like I kind of was like, I remember, I remember, you know, some of my first years teaching, I said, I am one of the art teachers said, don't ever teach crafts. Never. Like you're an art teacher. You only teach fine art. And so I stuck to that for several years. And really in my art teaching, yes, there were, there were fun things and we did a ton of fun stuff, but I always brought it back to an art, an artist, a book, you know, because I was in a school setting. Once I got over that and once I started going, okay, wait, I'm doing a paint party. This is a different market. These are not students at my school where I have to make sure they know Van Gogh's name. No, this is a mom, a friend who, you know, wants to get out of the house. And once I realized that I was creating a, and I'm just mixing black with a little bit of white to have kind of a, a blend here. But once I realized y'all that I was creating an environment, I was creating organization so that they could walk it, not like my art table. This is not, don't judge this. This is needs to be cleaned up. Um, but I could create an environment where they could come in and just have fun with their friends. Then I started realizing actually being a fine artist in that setting would not work. That it doesn't work because I'm throwing a party. So if you're a person who's like, you know, I'm a fine artist, but I feel like I'm going to, you know, I have to do fine art because I'll be a sellout. You know, I've had people tell me like, um, you know, it, it's just, it's great that you're doing that Heidi, but you know, I'm a fine artist and I have to do it this way. Well, that's wonderful. Like if you're a fine artist and you're making, you know, your money to feed your family and it's working, then by all means continue that path. But if you're a fine artist and you find yourself like struggling, because I am so done with the starving artist mentality, like so over that, because there is a way to make money and it is not beneath me to go teach a slime party with kids, yes, I'm an artist, yes, I'm a painter, but you better believe if it's gonna pay my mortgage or feed my family, I will check my ego at the door and teach 20 kids how to do slime and make 500 bucks any day of the week. Any day of the week. And I know some people are probably on this live going, oh, I could not do that. I could not be that person. Well. I'm the person that I want to feed my family. I want to make sure my bills are paid. I want to not only make sure my bills are paid, but I want to have a whole heck of a lot of fun while I'm at it. And if I need to be that person, then I'm that person. So when I go to a kid's party or whatever, my husband will go, oh, you're the party clown today. I'm like, yeah, this party clown just made this much and I'll show him my you know, amount of money for that. You know, And it's just kind of a joke in our family. 
And so again, guys, I am here just telling you, like if you have ever thought about this, if you've ever thought, you know, maybe I could make some money. Maybe I just want to pay for Christmas. Think of it that way. Let me do two parties between now and December and pay for Christmas. And that's where you've got to remember, y'all, you are not standing up there trying to be a fine artist. You are not standing up there going, oh my gosh, you know, they're judging me. No, if you're teaching a painting like this, which this is going to be available for Paint Party Headquarters soon, and if you're not sure what Paint Party Headquarters is, stay tuned. Make sure you are getting my emails because we have something really awesome coming out on September 5th for free. It's a called Paint Party Revolution, um, and it's basically three videos where I walk you step by step, booking a party, all of that. But guys, if you're a person who's like, you know, I just want to make some extra money. Um, I saw in here somebody said they're a teacher and they didn't make that much. Maybe it's something you want to do part time, but just try it. But what I do encourage you to do is remember, it is not, let me repeat, it is not about being a fine artist. It is not about standing up in the room and them judging you. I promise you, I used to think that. Now when I go in, they're like, Heidi, where do I do? Tell me where to go. Like, they just want to know that this needs to be painted orange. They just want to know that this needs to have some black faded into white. And that is something so simple that you can do together and again, I hardly ever paint at my paint party. So in a couple of weeks, I'm flying to Florida and I'm teaching this sunflower pumpkin painting, okay? So some of y'all could be looking at that and going, okay, you know, I could do that, but could I teach it? Guys, I'm gonna have papers, written out instructions, step by step. I'm gonna say, grab a little bit of orange, grab a little bit of yellow, and do a half C. I mean, I am literally like, it's not, it's not that you're teaching rocket science. It's really just a matter of people get scared. How many of y'all out there are just scared to be in front of people because you think you're going to be judged for how you're doing this? How many of y'all are out there doing that? Because I want to tell you a little secret. When I first started doing this, that's exactly what I thought. I thought, oh my gosh, they're going to be judging me. For what I'm about to say. Then I had all my notes behind my easel and I was frantically looking at every note, right? And then I looked around for a minute and I realized nobody was looking at me, not one person. <laughs> they were all staring at their canvas. They were all staring at their painting looking for their next instruction. None of them were, let me see your art degree. What school did you go to? Where did you train at? How many hours a week do you paint? No, no, they don't care. They want to have fun with their friends. They want to create something fun they can put outside their door or on their mantle and just escape life, totally escape life. And so the thing that I love about paint parties, and this is why it's totally changed my life. And does somebody mind giving me a time? And um, because I have a, we are busy, busy planning Paint Party Business Live coming up, and I have um, a lunch date with my planner at 11, so I don't want to be late. Um, but so many people think that it has to be like this perfect thing. Guys, here's the deal. You don't have to be professionally trained for this. You just have to have a passion to love people, and you have to be ready and okay to set things up. I mean, it's really not that hard. Getting started, and that's why I think I'm so passionate, is because Paint Parties has totally, totally transformed my life. And um, Anybody new to me? 1143. Awesome, Terry. Thank you. Will y'all let me know when it is um, 50? I got seven minutes, I can, and I can make it in 10 minutes to the restaurant. Um, can anybody, um, what was I saying? That was a good thought. What was it? I hate it. I hate it when I have something good to say and then it goes away. Ah, it's so frustrating. Well, let me get a drink of my coffee. Maybe I'll come back to me. What was it? What was it? Y'all remember? What was I saying? 
I know it was important. Do y'all remember where I was? <laughs> Sometimes people have to help me. Because I get on a track. I, I just get so passionate. I think that was what it was about. Um, yes, coffee. I, I spilled, if you look at my Instagram stories um, at Teacher Paint Party, I spilled like my entire coffee this morning. And then the ants like attacked it. They were so excited. It was like, they're, I mean, they were like telling each other. And then they acted like they were at a watering hole. Um, it was it was insane. Me and my husband, I was like looking at him with his coffee. I was so jealous. Because, you know, sometimes Starbucks makes really good coffee and then sometimes it kind of sucks. Well, I had a grande and it was really good. And then I dropped the entire thing. I like had it between, I was like, had it between my legs on a porch swing and I just lifted up to stretch for like one second and I was like stretching and then my coffee flew on the ground and then the ants, like we had one string of ants on our porch, they started going crazy. They acted like they were like, I thought it was like Lion King, like the watering hole, like all the animals come in. You should have seen them and then they would take sips of the coffee and then they would start running around like crazy like i don't know if caffeine affects ants or what but i was really upset but then it was interesting to see how they would go crazy on it um anyway i had a point what was the point to the story i think it was the, the fact of um guys here's the deal if you're thinking like hey maybe i want to teach something cute for Maybe I want to, I'm going to put this up. <laughs> Tanya, Starbucks is always awful. You know, sometimes they have a, sometimes they have some bad days, but I'm pretty addicted. Um, but this one was a good one and then it spilled. So I was really upset. Um, but you know, here's the thing guys, if you're like, Hey, I just want to make some extra money for Christmas and, but you're worried, you're worried about what everyone will think. Here's the deal guys. People are only, they're, People are so worried about what's going on in their life, right? There's so much going on in our lives. Um, we have to get over the fact of like, what will somebody think? And think about like, what could happen? You know, hyper ants. I know they were very hyper. They're probably taking over my porch right now. Bobby washed it off. Um, but they're probably like, you know, they're probably thinking, oh my gosh, it's really cool. Let me check out this pumpkin and maybe, you know, have some friends over, right? But here's the thing, y'all. We have got to remember, like, what's our goals? Um, my goals is to have a really fun, creative life and to always be painting and to be able to share God's love through art. Like, I feel like that is my mission. I feel like that is what God has put me on this earth to do. And I know that vehicle for me is teaching paint parties. I don't know what it is for you. All I'm saying is if you've ever been curious, to teach paint parties. And um, if you've made a comment, you've probably got an automatic message from the, the Autobots and they will be telling you how to get my ebook. Um, that's gonna walk you step by step. And it's mostly pictures. It's 40 pages, but it's mostly pictures. So it's a short read. Um, but guys, here's the thing. You have got to like stop worrying about, I'm not a fine artist. Stop thinking about like the imposter syndrome. Guys, you are offering something for people, and I always, it's just crazy because you never, you never know. Brandy says, paint those happy pumpkins. Brandy, are you eating a banana today? I'm just curious. Brandy, she was my roommate in Toronto, and she really likes to eat bananas. <laughs> and milk, lots of milk. I've never seen somebody so skinny drink so much milk. It's crazy. It was so funny. Um... But yeah, so you have to stop thinking about what other people will think of you and you have to start thinking about like what could happen. That is when I stopped worrying, you know, when I, when I quit my full time, I'm, not, I'm sitting here not telling you to quit your full time job, right? Um, but eventually my paint parties got so busy that I had to make a choice. I could either slow down my paint party business or I was going to take the, the risk. I was going to try it and see if it worked. All I'm doing is turning my brush over and just making it really thin. And then that way I can just easily go over this, go over the lines. But yeah, so I finally got to a point where, you know, I could choose, you know, which, what do I want to do? Do I want to try to do both? Cause I was basically doing full time for both of those. And it was killing me because I was trying to be, you know, in every place at once and I couldn't do both. Um, but you know, here's the thing, like when I did that, there were people that 
Ooh, that sounds delicious. And there were people that, you know, looked at me, even family that thought, you know, are you sure you're going to quit that, that teaching job? Like, are they were really worried about me because they did not see or know the goal. They didn't have any idea. Um, so I think, oh, thank you, Angel. I need to get off. Um, so I think so many times we sit here and we think like, you know, we worry about what other people are going to think. I guess that's the main thing. We worry about what other people are, are thinking. We worry about the imposter syndrome. We worry about all of these things that when it comes down to the end of the day, guys, I'm going to show you all the kind of finish. This is almost finished. Um, when it comes down to the end of the day, guys, this is your life. Like, how do you want to wake up and live it every day? Do you want to look this time at Christmas? Like, at Christmas, do you want to wake up and be like, man, all these presents were paid for because I taught two paintings. You know, I taught two events and all of my Christmas was paid for. Or do you want to, you know, wake up around Christmas and go, man, what if? Like, that would have been cool. Like, I should have done that. You know, because this fourth quarter is when all the paint parties happen. Yes, paint parties happen year-round, but they slow down around August and January. Those are the two months that I'm still, I have paint parties during those months, but those are the two months that I, I'm still trying to crack and still trying to perfect. But this quarter, this is when it all happens. And so if you have ever even thought about teaching a paint party, I want you to be ready for September 5th because I'm gonna be giving you on September 5th, September 9th, and September 11th, three videos that you can watch and they are free and they will tell you exactly what to do, starting with what supplies you need. Then it goes on to how to book a paint party fast and then it goes to tell you some of my secrets with getting butts in the seat. Nothing matters if you don't have prepaid painters, okay? So if you don't get my emails yet, make sure you get them. You can go to texasartandsoul.com. You can sign up for one of my free gifts there. Or if you made a comment, then you can sign up that way as well. Yeah, Betty, people don't see the big picture. And that is totally okay. It's okay if they don't see the big picture. But you have to manage your thoughts in your mind because guess what? At the end of the day, it's your life. It's the way you want to live it. And I just don't want you to look back with regrets. You know, what if you try a few parties and you're like, eh, that was fun, Heidi, but it's not for me? Well, guess what? You're ahead of, I just put all the wet paint on the bottom. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> guess what? You are ahead of most of the world because figuring out what you don't like is half of the battle. Really, guys, it really is. There's so many times when people are like, oh, I tried that and I realized like, eh, that's not for me. That's okay. You can still still know that that's something you don't want to do. Um, but if you've ever thought about it, you have that pit, that, that pit in your stomach where you're like, ah, you know, and you're thinking maybe I should do this. Um, I'm just, I'm excited for you. There's so much hope. Um, God has great things planned for us. This is just a really fun way to make extra money. So watch the video series. Something awesome is coming September 5th. Make sure you are watching your emails. Make sure my emails are not going into promo or spam folders um, because you're going to want to see those three videos. And um, Tamara says, I am watching you and I'm in the hospital. Oh my gosh. Um, I am feeling blessed and I'm planning on how much fun I will have with my own paint party business when I get out. Tamara, I hope and pray that you're okay. I hope everything's good and that you, whatever's going on, you're recovering and all of that because that's, that's crazy. But I'm glad you're watching. I'm glad you're excited and you have hope for that. Um, Sarah says, I'm so excited I caught a live video. I was wondering if we were supposed to pay a venue fee. Okay, so a lot of that is going to come up. Oh, Pam, thanks for being here. Um, a lot of that is going to come up in the video series. And so make sure on September 5th you watch that. And then um, Matt and Karen Brock, she says, I'm just worried about interfering with other people who do this in my area. Okay, so just so you know, I have a painting with this twist two miles that way. I have a board and brush less than half a mile from my house this way. Um, I have one of the people in my paint party headquarters is actually in my town and we share business. Um, I send her places that I can't get to. She has other places. Here's the thing, y'all. The way I teach you is totally different. I teach you where you're not a sitting duck. And there is, when I used to think about competition and used to be like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, you know, I, 
Guys, a hamburger is a hamburger. If it's good, people are gonna go to it. I go to McDonald's, no, I don't go to McDonald's, but I go to Whataburger, I go to Grumps, I go to other places with hamburgers. It's not that way, oh, I need to go. It's, you know, you can go to different hamburger places just like people can go to different paint places. And you're not confined by 10 miles. Guys, I'm flying four states away next week to a paint party in Florida. I teach you ways to do this where you're not bound by locations, you're not bound by certain areas, and also, I mean, you can be if you want, I'm not saying you can't just do it locally, but there's ways to do this where you're not interfering with, um, with other people, and the thing is, guys, there is enough out there. When you stop thinking about, yeah, Betty says it's perfect, there's room for everyone. When you stop thinking about, um, as competition but you start thinking about as you know there is a zillion people in the world like you know you having a party of 10 here isn't going to take down a painting with a twist right you having a party over here isn't going to take down a whole business model because you you had 10 people but if you had 10 people at 35 dollars that's 350 dollars you could put towards christmas like i mean we don't spend a crap load on christmas but i know two parties will pay for all of my family's christmas and then I don't have to stress. So yes, I gotta go plan Paint Party Business Live. We are still in the thick of planning. We have so many surprises for y'all. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, check out on my website. Um, and yeah, so many great things coming. All right guys, I gotta go. I'm late for a meeting. Talk to you soon, bye.